All right, so I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make uh, level sequences um, to record your uh, projects. So I'm just taking my scene where I put my god rays and uh, smoke uh, or fog, and I'm just going to drop in some cameras and use the sequencer. So the, the first thing we'll do is uh, up at the top, there's a cinematics button. And then there's a level sequence. So this is going to be attached to your map um, and it's going to look for the cameras that are inside that level. Um, and it's going to drop a reference to this thing in here. So I'm in week three um, and this is going to be demo sequence. All right, so it placed a, a sequence uh, little marker in here. That doesn't really matter where that is. Um, that's just going to give you now access to this big sequencer. Uh, so it's a big old timeline that you can you can drag through here. Um, the green is your start point, it's just going to stay at zero, and then the red is your end point. Uh, end point, and then uh, there's time just going across. Um, you can set how many frames per second you want to capture, um, and then there's going to when you're done with the sequence, and I'll show you how to set up the cameras. You're going to use this button up here to render the movie um, to a video file and you can change the frame rate you can change the aspect ratio um, and then we're just going to do an AVI and then you can say where you want it to go so I have it saving to my uh, visual effects class um, and then that's pretty much it uh, once you've dropped some cameras in and done some cuts and stuff um, then you can just record it so you could just place the camera in so let's just do that um, so in my scene uh, I want to drop a camera. Um, I'm going to go to the Place Actors tab, um, and then you go to Cinematic, um, or uh, what is it, Basic? I always forget where to find them <laughs> initially, because uh, you, you just want a camera. Um, I got it all. Yeah, here we go. So this is one way to do it. Uh, another way I like to do it is just from this little drop down in the viewport you can come down to create camera here and then a camera actor. And if you do that, then you'll notice that it just placed the camera where I was currently looking. So if you like find a place that you like and you're like, okay, um, that's the shot, right? You just go up to the top left, create camera here, camera actor. And you can do that as many times as you want. There are other types of cameras, but this, this one works for me just for the class because um, it's really quick. But as long as you have your camera selected in the scene, you're gonna see this little preview right here. Um, and if you wanna pin this while you're, while you're working, you can like select other stuff and you'll still see it down there. Otherwise, when you deselect the camera, um, that preview goes away. So I'm gonna pin it just so I can see what's going on. Um, and then, and I actually kinda of like that, that view, right? So I'm just gonna keep that. And what we'll do is just a simple rotation up. Um, you can also like move the camera and stuff, but I'll just keep with like, it'll look down We'll wait some time and then it'll look up, it'll wait some time and then it'll fade out. And that'll be the entire video. So I'm gonna go back to my sequencer now. So we have a camera placed and now I'm gonna grab um, the track. Um, first, I'm gonna get a camera cut track because we're gonna cut between cameras. We can add a second camera and show what that looks like. Um, so we're gonna have camera cuts and then I'm gonna add uh, that camera actor that we just dropped. So now we've got that in the scene. Now, my place marker was on frame 12, so I'm gonna actually pull this back and you can, you can highlight, either you can drag the full, the full um, camera view or you can also grab the edge of it to, to lengthen it. If you have multiple cameras and you move them around, some weird stuff happens, but just know that you can, you can control the length of that camera cut here. Um, so it's just gonna capture whatever that camera is looking at from this track. Um, now, if I want to move that, um, what I've got to do is add um, a track to the camera. So now I just want to say, okay, what do I want to do with the camera? I can add a track and then I can transform that. And the transform is going to give a bunch of different controls um, when we open that up. And that's going to be lo location. So that's if you're going to move the camera, rotation, um, and that's going to include individual values for, for the pitch roll and yaw and then scale, they don't mess with scale on a camera. Um, there are other options on like cinematic cameras where you can change like FOV and all that kind of stuff. But for this, I'm just keeping the default 16 by nine, whatever. Um, and it's just gonna capture what the camera sees. Um, so here, I want I want it to start here and stay there. So what you can do on here, if you've ever used After Effects or something like that, 
um, you can just kind of scrub through and say uh, one second in, so 60 frames in, um, I'm going to drop a keyframe for the, for the uh, rotation of the camera. So I'm going to hit the keyframe and that's going to uh, add it for all three of them in rotation. So I hit it on the rotation one and added for all three of them. If I just wanted one of them, I could just click for an individual one. Um, but it doesn't really matter to me. So what I'm going to do now is, so we have our starting point. So for the first second, it's going to stay stationary. And then from there on, I want it to move. So I'm going to jump forward another 60 seconds to 120. And then I'm just going to like move it to, so, to look up, right? Now, it's kind of hard using the values. You can technically like move these values and change these and all that, but you don't really know what's happening. So I'm going to move this out. I'm going to keep it on 120, frame 120, right? Because that's when I want it to turn up. And I'm going to come into the viewport and with this selected, I'm going to hit rotate. And then I'm just going to rotate this upwards. And I'm going to kind of correct it a little bit because it got a little, a little janky, right? So now we see where it's going to end, right? But that didn't capture anything on here yet. Um, so I moved the camera, but it's like, well, okay, that's cool. Um, but now I got to actually say, okay, now take all of the rotation stuff I just did and apply it. So now you'll see that when I come to that point, it's going to move my camera. It's going to move pretty fast. Um, you can make it smoother by just like making these longer. Um, so what I can do is I can say, well, okay, that, that was a very fast movement. So I'm going to actually like make this a little longer extend this camera cut um, and then take my keyframes and I'm going to move these further down maybe to like you know 240 so it's much longer right so now when I go back to the beginning of this and I hit play I'm pressing spacebar it's a much smoother transition right um, so now I have that I could just render that out now and that would that would be the video um, but what I'll do now is just add a second camera um, to the scene and then cut to that and then I'll add a fade track and then we're pretty much done. So um, what I could do is duplicate this by hitting control W or um, in here, uh, I could grab the uh, the camera and uh, and duplicate it. But I, I, I don't I don't want to do that because it's going to take all of the, the rotation stuff that I just did. And that gets a little messy. So I'm just going to go back into my scene and be like, OK, what's another good cut I could do? I'm gonna go like, okay, I like this view. I wanna show my fog, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna go into my little little thing here, go down to create camera here, camera actor. All right, so now I have a second camera at that new angle and I don't need this one anymore, so I'm gonna unclip that. Um, so now I turn around, there's my other camera. It's kind of looking through the wall, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll move that. Move that in a little bit so I can see it. There we go. All right, so I see it in here. I'm going to pin that one. Um, and then this one, uh, I'm just going to let that sit there. Um, I'm not going to do anything with that. Um, so what I want to do is now, okay, I have the camera that's going to look up. And then I want to fade that out. And then I want to um, cut to that other camera. So I'm going to extend this out so we can see that other camera eventually. Um, all right, so I'm going to come to the end of this one at uh, 300 frames. And then I'm just going to add an another camera. And I have to go and say, I want a new binding. Um, so the existing bindings, a binding is just, okay, what are you, what are you trying to bind this view to? Um, so I haven't told it yet that I have another camera in my scene that I want to use. So now I'm going to say, use my second camera that I have. And boom, it just drops it in. And you can see the little preview of this is where it ends up. And this is where the next one starts. Um, so from there, same thing. I can be like, okay, so from here on, I'm going to see that other camera cut. Um, happening. Um, so from there, I can be like, all right, well, I don't, I don't have to do anything. It's not going to move, right? So uh, I'll just leave that there. It's just going to go for the rest of the scene. Something I just did there was um, if you hold control and then scroll wheel, you can like zoom out essentially, like squeeze everything down. Or you can like zoom in so you can get more like fine frame control. Um, so it's just a quick, quick way to like get a, a broader view as to what your scene is going to do. Um, so then we want a fade track, right? So at the beginning of this, um, at frame zero, you can also type in your frame here. So if I wanted like frame 60, I can jump. So frame zero, um, you can also use, there's other controls to like go to the start or the end and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm at frame zero, so I'm going to add another track um, from up here. 
And there's a few different things you can do. I just use the fade track because um, you can just tell it, hey, I want the screen to go black. Um, so I'm going to click fade track. Uh, and then it's just going to be at zero. So you're not going to see a fade anytime. So I want it to start at zero at the first frame. So I want to click. I want that to start there. And then I'm going to move up maybe, you know, half a second or something like that. Hit another frame and then change that to... Oh, well, sorry. I want it to reverse. So I want it to start black, right? So I'm going to do one. So you see how the track shows black here, and then it's going to fade in uh, to no black. It's now going to show the camera. And then at the end of my scene, I also want to fade out. So I'm going to go somewhere around here. It doesn't really, I don't have to be super, super crazy detailed about it, but um, I can hit, I want this here. It's going to start transparent, and then it's going to go at the end of the scene, I know this is a 530 frame sequence, set it back to one, and now it's gonna fade in, it's gonna rotate up, it's gonna cut to the other camera, and then it's gonna fade out. And that's gonna be my entire sequence. So you can kind of preview that. This, this is the part where I, I don't know enough about the cinematic tools. I know there is a cinematic mode, but I just can't ever get it to do what I want. So um, you, can, you can grab your cameras, uh, pin both of these and you can kind of get a preview as to what you're going to get down here. Um, so I can, I can go to zero and you notice it's actually changing the entire scene, but not your cameras. So the cameras are like, this is what I see. And then your scene is like, well, I don't see anything because there's a fade track on it. So when I preview this, you see it comes up, this one's going to rotate up and then it's going to cut to this one and it's just going to stay there and then it's going to fade the scene out and that's it. So now I'm going to hit, now that we're done, we can save that sequence. Um, and if you want to see this sequence, you have to have the level open that you created it in. It's like assigned to that sequence from my understanding. So um, if, you, if you see like a bunch of red, ah, camera actors are red, then, you know, you, it, it's because you're in the wrong scene. So I, I think if I open up my other sequence, it'll, it'll show that. But uh, anyway, so we're done. So we can hit render. So we hit render. Um, I'm going to go 60 frames, 1080p, capture the movie. And then it'll give you a preview here of what it's going to render out. Um, so you just wait for that render to, to finish. Uh, this one's not going to take too long because we only did two very small things. Um, and then that will uh, give you a video file in the end that I can show you at the end. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, I enjoy it because I can move the cameras around and I don't have any of the uh, Unreal Engine being captured, like the engine itself. Uh, so if you want to capture the engine and show like your material editor and stuff, like definitely use like OBS or something um, so you can capture your desktop. But if you just want the video, this has been really easy for me to be able to do. So the capture finished. So I'm going to go to my renders folder. So I've got that demo file here and now I can open this up and boom. Now I've got my, my scene. The, I think the lighting needs to be baked, which is why it's got the weird artifacting going on. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, hope that was helpful to you.